Hello everyone and welcome back to Mountain Lion Park for game three of this four game set between the UCCS Mountain Lions and the Colorado School of Mines Ore Diggers. My name's Jake Ross alongside Michael Newman and we'll have the action for you all day today on the north side of campus here at UCCS. And Michael, yesterday they came in tied for fifth place in the RMAC. They split both games yesterday and are still in that spot today, 15 and 15 overall for both of them as you get a beautiful look at the stadium here in Colorado Springs. What are they going to have to do today to get over that hump and get sole position of fifth place for either of these sides? Yeah, kind of similar as yesterday. The bullpen did pretty well in game two, but we want to see the starting pitching uh, have, uh, go a little bit deeper into the game uh, for UCCS. We did, the starting pitcher didn't make it past the first out of the game. And even for the ore diggers, their starting pitcher didn't make it out of the second inning. So just a little bit more consistency on the pitching side and the offenses, they're going to be there for sure so this is going to be a good battle for fifth place absolutely and it's all about playing mean of meaningful baseball at the end of the season and certainly both teams here are doing that today the mountain lions trying to make that armac tournament it's looking a little bit better for both of these sides with the loss of ccu last night and that was kind of the the other series that these two teams was keeping their eye on. We'll continue to follow that series as the day goes on. They've got two up there in at Metro State, I should say, in Denver. And but other than that, the Mountain Lions just want that chance to to defend their RMAC tournament title in the tournament this year. And for the Ore Diggers, they missed the tournament last year and they want to get in and have that chance at the tournament crown this year. Definitely. And wanting to repeat is such a huge thing for this roster with the struggles that they had and the back and forth up and down season. They would love to get in and play spoiler to some of those top teams in the RMAC. And the way that both of these teams have been playing down the stretch, I would not be surprised personally if both of these teams, they'll be lower seeds in the bracket, but if they get in and do some serious damage to those upper teams of Regis, the Colorado Mesas, CSU Pueblos in there too, and those teams are not safe from the Mountain Lions or the Ore Diggers come tournament time if they do make it in. No, we know how powerful both these offenses are. We saw it yesterday. If the starting pitching could be consistent in playoffs, these teams are going to be dangerous. And both of these teams certainly capable of making some noise. And as just a fan of baseball, I certainly love watching those kind of underdog teams come in and, and kind of mess things up a little bit in postseason play. It's always fun for us. But to get you some starting lineups first offensively for the Ore Diggers, leading things off as he did yesterday, Wayne Boick out in center field. Mason Andrews in right, he'll be batting second. Luke Folsom, who we saw start game one on the mound and in the DH spot, will be over at third base today in the three hole. Adam Hotaling, who only was retired one at bat out of both games yesterday, his batting average went up like 35 points just yesterday. He's in the cleanup spot, rightfully so. Taylor White back out in left field. He's in the five spot. Ely Shu out at shortstop, batting sixth. Toby Scholes, who we only saw in one at bat yesterday in a pitch hitting situation, gets a start in the seven hole doing the DHing today. And then Caden Bonds back out in his spot at second base, batting eighth and rounding things out in the lineup. It'll be Keen Tanaka in the nine hole spot for the Mount Lions defensively Kit Wigington out in left field Walker Rumsey in center and Aaron Farragala back out in right field on the corners in the infield for the Mount Lions Nate Heffelbauer will be at third base with Caleb Stubbings at first McCulley Sare at his everyday spot now at shortstop Luis Samarano is at second base and Tyler Richardson back behind the plate as he was in both games yesterday. Cole Phillip gets the start for UCCS. This is his first ever time in his career pitching against the Ore Diggers of Colorado School of Mines. He comes in with a 10.23 ERA on his season. He is one in three in the decisions this will be his 11th start of the season and 13th overall appearance and he's looking to get the mountain lions 
rolling early. First pitch in this one will be delivered a fastball right down the middle. Good start for Phillip for strike one. And as you said, this is a big first game to set the tone for today. Winning this first game would be key for both teams. And going right after Moick in his first at bat is Cole Phillip. And Phillip really done a very nice job for the Mount Lions rotation this year. Ahead 0-2 to open this game. Swung on and missed. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Take a seat, Wayne Moick. He is out number one. And just pounded the zone. Three straight fastballs and blows them by him. A great start for Cole Phillip. So not wasting any time getting the swinging strikeout on three pitches. That'll bring up Mason Andrews out in right field. We saw him in that role both games yesterday as well. Alex Bumpus came in briefly to start game two for him in right field, but he reprised his role later in that game, fouls off the first pitch for strike one. A one pitch on its way, another heater. That one's gonna be low, one and one. First ball of the game delivered by Cole Phillip. And a reminder for everyone at home is that one another heater as he's using that fastball at every opportunity one and two now on mason andrews it is senior day here in colorado springs at the end of game two we'll have a little ceremony highlighting the mountain lion senior class and those graduating seniors that are leaving the program this year some really big names among that group so you'll want to stick around and see that also in between the doubleheader today the UCCS women's soccer team who had a very successful season was the co-regular season champions as that curveball is going to catch the arm of Mason Andrews. He'll go to first on the hit by pitch for the first base runner of the Ore Diggers. But to continue that thought, co-regular season champions for the women's soccer season with Colorado Mesa University went on to win the RMAC tournament, did the women's soccer team, and they made it all the way to the Sweet 16 in the national tournament. And it kind of looked like the perfect storm this year for them as the national championship was in Colorado Springs down at Widener Field where the switchbacks play here in Colorado Springs. It kind of felt like the, the Lady Mountain Lions of soccer were gonna get over that hump and be able to play in their home city, but just couldn't quite get the job done, but a remarkable and record setting season for them nonetheless. We'll give them their tournament rings in between games and have a little ceremony for them. So make sure you stick around as Folsom is behind 0 and 1 at the plate. Heater swung on and missed another good fastball from Phillip as he's dealing early 0 and 2. Yeah, he's, he's showing a really good fastball so far. Uh, so far, Ore Diggers are not able to catch up to it. And the young freshman, he's really showing it. Um, keep going back to it. Don't try and change things until they can prove to you that they can hit it. We've seen the change up once or twice. We only saw that one curveball that ended up hitting Mason Andrews to send him to first. O2 pitch, See heater you. there. See you later. Throw him out at second. And it gets away into center field. Unfortunately for the Mount Lions, moving up to third base is Mason Andrews. Could have been a strike him out, throw him out, double play, but not able to handle it at second is Samarano. And that will let Andrews move up to third base. But two outs here for Adam Hotaling. Yeah, and the throw was just up to the right side of second base, and it hit Mason Andrews before Samarano could make the play, and it bounced in to left field. So should be, I don't know if that goes down as an error because it goes off the runner, but it does. Uh, we do mark it down as an error. I believe it will end up being a throwing error indeed on Richardson at the plate to allow Andrews to get to third. It is a stolen base for him at second base. 1-0 pitch to Hotelling, swung on and missed. There's that high fastball again, and it's working well for Phillip here early. Just to finish my thought earlier, we only saw that one curveball that hit Andrews. May not go back to that quite yet and just stick with that fastball changeup mix. It's been working really well for him through the first few batters here. 
but Hotelings really the first big test. So we'll see how he plays out here. Definitely in a slight shift with Sam Rano a little bit back into right set, into right field, leaving kind of a hole up the middle. And we saw Hotelings take advantage of that a couple times yesterday. Yeah, not a really aggressive shift here. Samarano at second is in short right field there, so a little bit of a shift, but Sayers a little bit to the left of his normal position, fouling that one off and running the count full, though, is Hotelling, so a nice job by Phillip to go after the very confident hitter of Hotelling, who just could not be stopped yesterday, only set down one time out of his seven or eight at-bats over the day. Three and two here with two outs. Runner on third for the Ore Diggers. See how Philip responds. Fastball fouled away. Count stays full. And he keeps using that fastball, and they are not seeing it well. He's blowing it past them, and they're just trying to make contact with it at this point. I wonder what his RPMs are looking like, because the higher the RPM on the fastball, the more it's li less likely that a hitter is going to be able to see it. Another 3-2 pitch inside. See you later, Adam Hotelling watches strike three. And Cole Phillip dealing early gets the huge strikeout and keeps the ore diggers scoreless in the first inning for the first time here this weekend. We'll see how the ore diggers respond defensively as the Mount Lions offense comes up for the first time in the bottom of the first after this. Shoneman on the mound for the first time this weekend delivers ball one to McCulley Sayre outside with the fastball. Shoneman comes in with a 27 even ERA in four. He's given, excuse me, four runs up in one and one third innings career wise against the Mountain Lions. He's only started one previous game versus UCCS, did not earn a decision. That was one year ago tomorrow on May 8th, 2021, up in Golden. He is behind still to Sare, two balls and one strike at the plate. This season, he's got a 7.17 ERA, is two and three overall, as this one's grounded over to Bonds at second base. And Sare will be out number one for the Mountain Lions, bringing up Samarano for the first time this weekend. Nice start, though, for Shoneman with the ground ball. This is Shoneman's ninth start of the season and 11th overall appearance. And he's been pretty much steady. Eddie gives up a couple runs here and there, but for the ore diggers, he keeps them in the game, and that's all you can ask for from your starting pitcher as that one's fouled away for strike one on Samarano. And we may see him a little bit more. He's only a sophomore out of New Mexico. 
So we'll see him for most likely a couple more seasons uh, in the future meetings between these two teams. Sam Marano watches strike two behind 0-2. Fastball here is fouled off. Nice job by Sam Marano to stay alive, but Schoenman going right after the mountain lines here early. Get you some starting lineups here in a moment as Schoenman works quickly. He comes set again, the 0-2 pitch in the dirt, ball one. For the mountain lines offensively, McCauley Sayre, Luis Samarano, Kit Wigington at the very least in the first inning, one, two, and three in the lineup. Caleb Stubbings in the cleanup spot. Aaron Farragala batting fifth as this one's hit well into center field. It'll get down just in front of Wayne Moick and a one-out single is a first base runner for the Mount Lions as Luis Samarano's aboard. And that was one of the things missing yesterday was some production out of the two hole. Pa Mason Pastorello did not have his best day yesterday in both games. So putting a change out there and letting Luis Samarano have a chance and already working with a hit in the bottom of the first inning. Big bat here now and Kit Wigington and Pastorello had a tough day and there it is. Oh my goodness. Watch it fly and say goodbye. <laughs> Kid Wigington to the deepest part of the park, puts the mount lines up 2-0. A monster shot to right center field. For Wigington, it's his 15th home run of the season and puts him over the 50 RBI mark, 50 and 51 on those RBIs on Wigington season and the Mountain Lions have the lead. And he hits that ball over the batter's eye, which is incredibly difficult to do. 400 dead center and then hitting it even farther over the batter's eye, which is what you have to do here at Mountain Lion Park. Off the batter's eye is still in play, so a massive home run from Wigington. And he saw that fastball all the way, sat on it and made no mistake. Fouling off strike one is Stubbings to finish the thought I had before. Passarello had a tough day, but not really so much his fault. A couple of strikeouts, but he was hitting a lot of hard hit balls right at defenders as that one's outside for ball one. To finish the mountain lion lineup, which we got distracted from as well. In the six hole, Casey Campbell's the DH. Tyler Richardson will do the catching in the seven hole. This one's going to be extra bases if it gets to the wall, but cutting it off out there is white. And so just a single for Stubbings. But another Mount Lion runner on for Aaron Farragala, who is no bat to look past as well. we'll see what he has to say at the plate on Shonmin. But another Mount Lion runner out there. Once again to finish the lineup, third baseman Nate Heffelbauer in the eight hole with Walker Rumsey batting ninth. And that one's left over the plate, but just missing it is Aaron Farragala out there in center field to settle underneath it is Moek. And out number two is a Mount Lions right fielder, which will bring up the designated hitter in Aaron Farragala staying put at first base as it was in pretty true center field. And an easy play for Moek is Caleb Stubbings at first. We'll see what Campbell has to say. And Campbell had a couple of uh, opposite field hits yesterday as they were shifting him to the right side. So good to see him make that adjustment and get a few hits, including a double and a single to the left side. Defensively for the ore diggers in the outfield from left to right, Taylor White, Wayne Moick, Mason Andrews out there in the green grass, swinging through that fastball and a good one from Shonman is Casey Campbell, one and one now on him. On the corners in the infield, Luke Folsom over at third. You saw Danny McDermott over there yesterday. Adam Hotaling back over at first, swinging through another. That time changeup is Casey Campbell behind one and two. Up the middle, Ely Shu at shortstop. Caden Bonds at second, same middle infield for the Ore Diggers as the first two games yesterday with Keen Tanaka behind the plate. He started game one and came in halfway through game two, but gets a start today. Swung on and missed, though, at the plate. And ending the inning for the Mountain Lions as Campbell strikes out swinging, but not before damage done. A monster shot from Kit Wigington over that batter's eye in right center field has the Mountain Lions up 2-0 as we go to the second inning.
Taylor White leading things off, five, six, and seven with White, Shoe, and Skulls due to the plate here in the second inning. Mountain Lions come back on defense with the lead after the Wigington shot. First pitch hit well into left field. Over there, though, is Wigington, and he'll shade in and make the catch in short left field for out number one. One pitch, one out for Cole Phillip here in the second inning. Yeah, just off the end of the bat. Uh, thought he got better contact as well. It sounded good off the bat. But then once I saw that ball traveling, it definitely was off the end of the bat, and Wigington made a good adjustment, got the out. And the wind blowing pretty well out to pretty much straight center field, a little bit cheating towards left here and there, but it's kind of tough to see the flag at times behind that pole out there. That's how straight it's blowing out. Ball one, though, here. Second pitch, that's a high changeup that Chu fouls off. One and one now on the shortstop of the Ore Diggers. High changeups, when executed correctly, can be a very lethal pitch. And a very nice spot there. Just misses the outside part of the plate for ball two on that changeup. And as you said, to your point there, those high changeups are really jarring for batters if used in the right spot. This ball's hit a ton, but I think it's going to stay in the park over there. A few strides in from the track. Wigington again will make the catch a little bit underneath it and just missing a home run there. Ely Shu is out number two. Yeah, everything in the air is we're going to have that reaction to with the wind blowing straight out, like you said. And being 80 degrees today, the ball is going to be flying all day. Yeah, it's a very pleasant day out here at Mountain Lion Park. Lots of people out here in their folding chairs. The bleachers pretty full as well. As we said yesterday, the War Digger fans like to travel as that one's fouled out of play on the third base side for strike one on Toby Skulls at the plate. 0-1 pitch. Outside ball one. Once again, as we say every time we do these broadcasts, if you're in the Colorado Springs area, we'd love to see you out here. Very, very nice weather. That's a strike for sure. Low and away corner and spotting that changeup is Cole Phillip. One and two now. We'll see if he tries to beat him with the fastball here. It's been working really well. One and two with two outs. Goes change up again. This one's hit very well to center field. Going back is Rumsey. He tries to pick it out, but it goes over the fence. And a solo shot for the Ore Diggers in the fourth home run of the season for Toby Scholes gets the Ore Diggers back within a run. And a big moment for Scholes being that he is a graduate senior. He should, this will be his last season with the Ore Diggers, so a good moment for him and what is potentially his last day. Kind of two sides of the coin. It's the freshman for the Mount Lions who's going to see many, many more games here in collegiate play. And Toby Scholes, his days are numbered here in his collegiate career. He's been very, very good across his career, though, for the Ore Diggers. So. It'll be tough for them to say goodbye to number 27, but he gets the ore diggers on the board here. See how Phillip responds after the home run. And a base hit to center field, left that change up up above the belt a little bit, and Bonds knocks it into left field. You just got to get the ball down. This is a day when you can't let anything up in the zone because these guys are going to hit it out on both sides. So definitely want to keep the ball down. Got to keep the changeups low. Got to keep the fastballs low. Anything hanging, anything put in the air is going to get out, just like what Skulls did a couple at-bats ago. Brings up the nine-hole hitter Tanaka for his first try of the day. There's that breaking ball. We haven't seen it very much. Misses outside, ball one. Pretty conservative lead over there for Bonds. I think the Ore Diggers are content to flip the lineup, but just out of the reach of Nate Heffelbauer. This will be extra bases for Tanaka as it gets to the wall. They will send the runner, Bonds, around, and he'll tie the game at two. The Ore Diggers responding right back with a two-out rally. The home run from Skulls 
a single and a double have them back even at two with the Mountain Lions. Yeah, three hard hit balls in a row off of Cole Phillip. Now is the time for a little bit of a settle down, take a deep breath. You're still an out away from ending this inning and getting your offense back on the field. RBI single for Tanaka, or excuse me, RBI double for Tanaka. That is his 11th RBI of the season. Big one here in the late schedule pieces for the ore diggers as they continue to battle the mountain lions for that five seed. 1-0 pitch as Moex back up there. Strike call that time, one and one. And that was a good fastball, low in the zone. Got to try and hit that spot all day today. Phillip checks out on Tanaka, goes to the plate. That fastball's in the dirt, two and one. And for Phillip, who started off very strong, struck out all three outs in the first inning. Only base runner was a hit by pitch in Mason Andrews in the, the two hole who waits on deck here. And a couple of fly outs over to Kit Wigington and left to start this inning. But then one mistake to Toby Scholes knocked over the wall. And then that kind of sh has shaken the confidence for Cole Phillip. A single, a double after that. Tie game here, three and one now on Wayne Mowick. The pitch, that's a great fastball. Gets the strike call. So three and two here now with two outs. Had a three and two with two out situation in the first inning as well. Got the looking strike out of Adam Hotailing, which is an impressive feat. We'll see what he does here. Three and two again. This ball's hit a ton. It's going to be foul. Would have been way gone if it was fair. That's over bouncing down the trail towards the car dealership on the other side of the hill. That was a monster shot, but a foul ball instead. So Phillips still has a chance at Moek with a full count. Another 3-2. Fastball knocks back up the middle. They're going to send Tanaka. The throw coming from center field. And close play, but no tag. Is a little bit late. The ball bouncing in, and the ore diggers all of a sudden have a one-run lead. All with two outs in the second inning. Three runs in for the ore diggers. And definitely a good time for Coach Lee to come out and chat with his young starting pitcher, kind of settle him down now. Well, now you're facing the two, three, four hitters, and they did a lot of damage in the two games yesterday. First two batters in Taylor White and Neely Shue set down by flyouts to left, then a home run, a single, an RBI double, and another RBI single. And that's where we are. Four, or excuse me, three runs in for the boys down from Golden. And Phillip has looked really well for the Mountain Lions, as we said, just a little bit of shaking confidence after that two out shot from Toby Scholes and he's got the stuff working for him today he's just kind of get out of his head and and back into the game a little bit here just too many pitches over the middle of the zone you want to get on either side of the zone and work up and down as well just too much middle of the plate and that's where a lot of damage is done in baseball Mason Andrews comes back to the plate, was hit by a curveball on his first step bat. He's got a 309 average in his season and a very nice spot away and at the knees there for strike one with the fastball. And Phillip at this point, the way that his fastball has been working, you might just want to string those together and try and overpower Andrews here. See what he goes with. Another fastball outside. This one's too far, one and one. A lot of sync on that fastball looking for maybe a ground out with that pitch. And even with the heater, there is a little bit of movement on it as it likes to run. So a little deception even on the, the hard throw. 1-1, one, one, that one's a high change up 2-1. and one. Shows how hard that Cole Phillip likes to throw. 
That changeup still has good speed on it, but definitely a little bit off enough to kind of make hitters think. This one's hit high in the air to center field. This should be the third out, though. Rumsey shades over, reaches up, and makes the catch, but the ore diggers come all the way back and get even more. They have a three to two lead now as they explode with two outs in the top of the second, and the Mount Lions try and get even when they come up to bat in the bottom of two. Richardson, the first mountain lion to the plate in the bottom of the second inning with seven, eight, and nine in the bottom three in the lineup. Called to the plate here. Ooh, that's a crazy slider. We haven't seen that pitch yet. It'll look real good for strike one. A lot of movement on that pitch. A lot of RPMs going to have a good maybe few feet of movement on that. Comes back with the fastball. 0-2 oh on Richardson is mixing it up here is... Ben Schoenman. That slider, though, had a pretty significant hook to it. So if that starts to work for Schoenman, it's going to be a dirty pitch moving forward. High on that one, one and two on Richardson. Tyler comes in with a 414 average. Lots of production for the Mount Lions behind the plate offensively, which is always just a bonus for a coach from your catcher, though that one's going to be bounced over, and Shu will throw out Richardson at first base for out number one. That'll bring up Heffelbauer. And a lot of speed from Richardson as well. He could really move around the bases and beat out ground balls as well. Absolutely, and likes to run fast enough for his helmet to fly off and him to show off those luscious, luscious locks, excuse me, he's got underneath his his helmet as Heffelbauer takes for ball one inside. 1-0 -oh pitch, that one's gonna be just outside on the heater, 2-0, -oh, Heffelbauer's ahead. Heffelbauer with a great day yesterday with a handful of hits. This one's gonna be bounced tried to make the tough pickup but unable to do so i imagine it'll be a base hit for heffelbauer and it is a single for nate so that's a one out base runner for walker rumsey and rumsey will be content even just to move heffelbauer over with McCauley Sarah in the top of the lineup waiting on deck, but he'll take a hit whenever he's at the plate. We'll see what he goes with. There's that slider again. Falls in there, strike one. It's a good slider. Really good, wicked slider that we've seen from Schoenman. We didn't see it in the first, like you said, but now he's starting to show it in the second inning. Fastball that time around, and that's starting to be the pattern. First pitch slider, second pitch fastball, and 0-2 oh here on Rumsey. Showman set. The pitch here, another fastball catching up to that one, but fouling it straight back as Rumsey counts stays 0-2. Oh 
Not a very big lead from Heffelbauer at first base. Not a whole lot of speed over there from Nate Heffelbauer either. Not a huge stealing threat, but a good base runner nonetheless. 0-2 pitch. There's another breaking ball, and that's going to be a hit out into left center field, cutting it off, but a little bit of a misplay. But good recovery out there by Moick, and Heffelbauer has to stay put at second. But back-to-back -back one out singles here in the top of the lineup is at the plate with McCauley Sayre. Yeah, and a good piece of hitting from Walker Rumsey. Got his pitch and hit its left center. Good cutoff from the center fielder. Did have that slight bobble. But Heffelbauer had already stopped on second base and already lost his momentum. So smart for him to stay at second base. Mount Lions trying to get their lead back after surrendering it in the top half of the inning. Three to two, the Ore Diggers lead. The Mount Lions have a couple runners on with one out. 1-0 -oh pitch to Sarah at the plate. That's an inside strike, one and one. Outside on that heater, two balls and one strike is working ahead is McCauley Sayre on the 2-1 pitch he saw in the first inning. He grounded it over to Bonds at second base. See if he can remedy that here. Schoenman comes set, checks on Heffelbauer, goes to the plate. Double steal, hit and run, foul ball just on the wrong side of the bag. And Dave Hadjik over there kind of kicks the grass. He thought he got away with a move there as that was definitely going to get into left field if it was fair. But two and two instead. Heffelbauer returns to second, Rumsey to first. First time this game that Showman's had runners kind of stay on base he had a few pass through in the first inning but first time he's really dealt with some actual pitch to pitch traffic as fouling that one away and keeping it 2-2 is Sarah at the plate checking on Heffelbauer but Showman focuses on home another 2-2 pitch fastball just below that one is Sayre, Heffelbauer is going to stay put at second as moving in to get that ball was Mason Andrews. Nice job by the right fielder to work behind the baseball and come through it as he caught it to keep Nate Heffelbauer at second. No throw after all, but Heffelbauer would have been in a bad way if he did try and test it, and that'll bring up Sam Marano. Nice little two-out hit would be nice for the Mountain Lions to try and tie this game. One run wow. out there for San Marano as Rumsey does have good speed on first, though, so an extra base hit could bring Rumsey home from first. Behind, though, 0-1 is San Marano. 0-1 pitch. There's that slider, and way underneath it is San Marano. That's high in the air in the infield and there to make the catch is Caden Bonds at second base. The Mount Lions threaten to try and even this game up, but come up empty, stranding two in the bottom of the second inning. We go to the third as the Ore Diggers try and extend their lead.
Two hits for the Mountain Lions in the bottom of the second inning end up in two stranded runners as Luke Folsom will try and add to the ore diggers lead leading things off here in the third. Strike one delivered there from Phillip. As he goes right after Folsom struck him out on three pitches his first time up. Oh one, that's a high breaking ball, one and one. Working from the wind up here with no runners on is Cole Phillip. 1-1, one, one, fastball hit well into right field and Farragall is just gonna watch that one fly over his head. Luke Folsom strikes again, 14th home run of the season, 54th RBI for Folsom. And he does indeed add to the lead for the Colorado School of Mines or Diggers as they have themselves a two run lead now up 4-2. Fastball up over the outside half of the plate and Folsom knocks that one opposite field. Farragala just kind of sat in his position and watched it go over his head. Ball one here to Adam Hotaling. A lot of opposite field power, power we've seen from the ore diggers so far. This one's in the air to center field. Out there to make the play easily is Walker Rumsey for out number one. So good response after the solo shot from Folsom to come back and get Hotaling. And that'll bring up Taylor White who flew out to Kit Wigington for the first out of the second inning in his first at bat. First pitch here, fastball outside half, strike one. That one misses, one and one. One, one pitch, that one's gonna be low and gets through Richardson. No harm, no foul with no runners on, but two and one at the plate now on Taylor White. Two, one pitch. Fouled away, two and two. Another two two pitch, that one's a high off speed. The count is full. I do like that he's been attacking these hitters. He attacked Folsom and who tailing gave up the home run, but got the first out of the inning from ho tailing. He's retired him twice and he was the most dangerous bat from the war diggers yesterday. Indeed he is as going to first with the one out walk Taylor White brings up Ely Shu. 304 average coming into the day for the shortstop of the ore diggers. Very upright in his stance in the box. First pitch to Shu. Fastball knocked into left field for a base hit. And Wigington has that one kick off of him. And he's not going to try and make a play at second base. So a single and an error allows Shu to second base and all the way to third, Taylor White. And with that ball being hit so hard and the turf being as bouncy as it is, it just took a big bounce and off of Wigginson, unfortunately, allowing both runners to advance. Second error of the game for UCCS. Phillips got traffic here. One out, two runners in scoring position. Skulls, Baltimore chop over the head of Heffelbauer into score and stopping at third, so White scores. Shu has to stop at third, but a three-run lead now for the ore diggers of Colorado School of Mines. 
And runners on the corners now for Caden Bonds, who had himself a single in his first at bat. And there's just not much Nate can do over at third base with a big bouncer like that. Those are so hard to read, especially off a of turf. When it's hit really hard straight into the ground, it just bounces right over his head. There's just nothing he can do. Lots of confidence now in this offense of the ore diggers who have kind of solved Cole Phillip at this point. He started off really strong. Great fastball to open the at-bat here for strike one. Tanaka, who had an RBI double his first time up, waits on deck. Phillips set, 0-1 pitch, nice high change up. There that is again in 0-2. and two this could be two there's the flip oh. nice play at second double play wow the mountain lions turn a dandy a beautiful flip from luis samarano and a great turn from macaulay Serre. and the ore diggers get two more but that's all in the top half of the third as the mountain lions have work to do in the bottom half of the inning when we come back Wigington, who had a absolute moonshot his first time up, comes back up for the second time, and he's swinging away as he fouls that first pitch off for strike one. Two-run shot is the only two runs for the Mount Lions in the first as Wigington tried his best to hit it onto Pulpit Rock. This one eats up, hotailing at first and cutting first, going to second. Wow, great base running. Kit Wigington lakes out a double. Yeah, and a hard hit ball just bounces over the glove of the first baseman and into right field. Good read from Wigington to see that he can advance to second on and, and get that double. It is a double for Wigington as it was hard hit at hotailing and a not an easy play for him. So leadoff double brings up the cleanup hitter Stubbings, a little bit of a daylight play, but no throw. And bouncing that one foul at the plate is Stubbings for strike one. I'm not sure what that play accomplishes because you're losing the entire left side of the infield with the shortstop shoe covering, basically standing on second. Especially with the right-handed hitter. This is a tough play over at third, and Stubbings is going to be at first. I imagine that'll probably be an error. And it is an error that puts Stubbings on first base. Aaron Farragala now at the plate. 
First and second for the Mountain Lions with nobody out. Farragala, his first time up, flew out to center field in Wayne Moick out there. Had a monster shot yesterday. We'll see what he does here. Nice fastball there from Schoenman to open the at-bat, 0-1. This is the guy you want on base, the guy who's been a mountain lion for a few years now. With runners on base, I love the situation for him. That one's low, one and one. Farragala, one of the seniors in the mountain lions lineup today. He'll be honored after the game as a part of that group. One, one pitch. Strike two called on the breaking ball, and there's that dirty slider again. Farragala last year kind of switched off right field and DH with himself and Evan Richards, who left the program after last season. One and two, reaching for that one and coming up empty, a swinging strikeout for Aaron Farragala is out number one, and that'll bring up Casey Campbell. And that slider is working for Schoenman. Lots of movement on that pitch. It just catches, uh, catches Farragall on his front foot a little too early on the swing and misses it. Underneath that one and fouling it out of play on the third base side is Campbell for strike one. Campbell struck out swinging on a one-two count his first time out for out number three in the first inning. Has an RBI out there for him at second base with Wigington. That one again, high off speed pitch, fouling it back out of play 0-2. And they are pounding Campbell inside with the fastball and it's just jamming him. He's not able to get on time on that pitch. O2. Outside one and two. Good eye there from Campbell staying patient. 282 average for Campbell starting the game today. He's been the designated hitter for the Mount Lions in all three games of this series. Swung on, foul tip held, and another strikeout for Casey Campbell as the first two base runners get on with no outs, but now two outs for Tyler Richardson. And Wigington and Stubbings haven't moved in a little bit. See what Richards has to say. Three doubles yesterday for Tyler Richardson. There's that slider again and softly bouncing it off the end of the bat as Richardson into the mouth of his own dugout. Umpire flashing how many reserve baseballs he has left to the home dugout as the home team's responsible for providing the baseballs. 0-1 pitch, there's that. That one looked more like a curveball. 0-2 as it fans Richardson. Owen 2 two outs. Runners on first and second for the Mount Lions. Wigington on second, Stubbings on first. Throw to the plate. This Hang one's it. a fair ball down the left field line. This is going to score at least one. Wigington around. They're going to send Stubbings. The throw is not going to come to the plate in a two-run double. Off the bat of Tyler Richardson with two outs, gets the Mount Lions back within a run. Man, those first two sliders were great. Started in the middle of the zone, fell off the plate. That one hanging right down the middle. Perfect pitch for Tyler Richardson to drive down the left field line and gets the two-run double. Fourth double of the series for Tyler Richardson. He's been very productive out of that seven hole. Heffelbauer now takes a fastball for strike one. Heffelbauer singled in that first inning. Richardson back out there for another RBI. This one's bounced over to Shue at shortstop, and this should get the job done for the ore diggers and does as Shue throws out Heffelbauer at first base. But the Mount Lions get a pair of runs back. They match the two 
that the ore diggers got in the top of the inning and restore their one run deficit but the ore diggers look to add on in the top of the fourth when we return to mountain lion park First pitch fastball in there for strike one on Keen Tanaka, who's leading things off for the Ore Diggers in the fourth inning. Nine, one, and two due up for Colorado School of Mines. Second pitch, this one yeah. caught over there at first base. What a play over there by Caleb Stubbings laying out and picking it off the turf for out number one. Great diving catch. He was probably going to stop that ball either way, but catch get out of the air fantastic diving play Number 35, Wayne, Moek. Wayne Moek comes up he's one for two with a strikeout and a single was stranded at first in the second after his base hit 0-1 on the off-speed pitch that catches the outside half Oh, one pitch, same spot, same result, 0-2. Oh Phillip starting to get back to his first inning form. 0-2, oh fastball, this one's hit softly into right. Farragala has to adjust, but comes in to make the catch. Two batters, four pitches, and two outs for Cole Phillip. Yeah, just, just a little too much plate for what I would have liked for an 0-2 pitch, but still jams him and gets to fly out to Farragala. Brings up the lefty Mason Andrews. 0 for 1 with a hit by pitch and a fly out. First pitch just misses the outside part of the play. Good spot though from Phillip for ball one. 1-0 pitch, goes fastball again, and that one catches a corner, one and one. Another heater, this one misses low, and working ahead now is Andrews, two balls and one strike. Cole Phillip, pretty intense pitcher on the mound, the way he looks, his demeanor. Indeed, and he struts off after getting his first one, two, three inning of the game. A line out to Samarano at second ends it for the Ore Diggers, and the Mount Lions down a run, try and get even in the bottom half of the fourth when we return to Colorado Springs on the RMAC Network and UCCS Live.
Dylan Moraes will pinch hit here for Walker Rumsey to lead off the inning. Not sure if there's any discomfort there for Rumsey or not. We'll keep an eye on that one for you. But Moraes, first pitch to him, hits him in the hip. And a first pitch base runner for UCCS as Moraes goes to first. Welcome to the game. Oh for 2, McCauley Sayre comes to the plate. This one's chopped over to third. Could be two for the ore diggers. Can McCauley beat it? No, he cannot. Very nice double play there from the ore diggers as they go around the horn and erase both Mount Lion base runners on one play. Quite the, outlook, quite the change of outlook on an inning with that. Gets the first base runner on, next pitch, a double play, and now two pitches, two outs. 5-4-3 double play ends the early threat from the Mount Lions, but Sam Marano can still do damage. 0-1 oh on him at the plate. Fastball fouled away, 0-2. Oh Way outside on that one is ball one, one and two, as missing his release point is Ben Schoenman on the mound. Happens every once in a while for a pitcher. No harm, no foul for Schoenman, though, with no runners on. One, two pitch, another breaking ball. That one slides out of the zone. Did he go? No, he did not, as they check on first base. Two and two. Two two pitch fastball foul down the first baseline for the count to stay even at two. The Mount Lions red shirts goes chasing after that one in the corner in right field. After that stoppage to retrieve the baseball will continue. Two and two here with two outs. Sam Marano at the plate for UCCS. The pitch. High fastball and catching up and fouling that one away again is Sam Marano, who's battling at the plate. Definitely look for the slider in this in this count now. Couple fastballs in a row. Got him timed up on the fastball. Now he'll be early on a slider. Seventh pitch of the at-bat. Oh. There's another fastball, though, and this one's hit well to center. Going back is Moek. It's off the wall. Sam Marano took a good turn at first. He'll go to third. And they'll hold him up there as he goes into third base with a two-out triple. And here comes the big bat and Kit Wigington with a home run and a double already. He's two for two. Yeah, not my favorite pitch to throw in that situation. He had thrown a couple fastballs, and Sam Murano had timed them up. And to his credit, he got another one, and he put a charge in it going off of the center field wall and gets a triple. See what Wigington has in store this time around. Two hard hit balls already, and he's swinging away right away. The inside fastball fouled off for strike one. And if you're showman, this is not the batter that you want to face. You wanted to start an inning with him, not have him with runners on. That one's fouled down the first base side. 0-2 on Wigington. O2, high out of the zone on the fastball, one and two. Staying patient at the plate is Wigington, letting that one go. As we mentioned before, two run shot in the first and then a double and a run scored in the second. He's two for two. Fouls that one back again. The so count stays one ball and two strikes. One, two, fastball, got him. And a beautiful pitch there from Shoneman. And it fans Kit Wigington setting him down for the first time today. And the two out triple off the bat of Luis Marano goes for not. 
The Mount Lions come up empty in their half of the fourth inning as the Ore Diggers maintain their one, one, one run lead, excuse me, and look to add on as we go to the fifth inning. Folsom in the three hole starting things off here in the fifth inning for the Ore Diggers. Three, four, and five in the middle of the lineup scheduled to hit here. First pitch, fastball, strike one. This one's bounced just on the wrong side of the foul line as Richardson was trying to steal an easy out there for UCCS, but 0-2 instead on Folsom. And now don't throw him anything into the zone until you get two balls. Give him, make him swing at a pitch outside of the zone here. Phillips been dotting that fastball just outside of the zone. We'll see where he goes in this situation, 0-2. Mm. Most fastball does catch the plate, and that's going to be extra bases for Folsom as it rolls to the wall. That one's going to bounce over the wall, so a ground rule double and a leadoff base runner in scoring position for Colorado School of Mines. So it's not a terrible pitch. It's a fastball on the outside black, but that needs to be three or four balls off the plate so he still sees it's a fastball and then swings and misses or it's weak contact then. Instead, he's able to put a charge into it to right center field and gets a ground double. He's had good run on that two-seamer today. Tried to utilize it there, but ran a little bit too far back into the plate. Outside fastball there. One ball and no strikes on Hotailing. He's got an RBI waiting for him on second base in Folsom. one -oh pitch. At the letters on the outside half, fouled away out of play, one and one. Hotailing 0 for 2 with a looking strikeout to end the first inning on a 3-2 pitch and then a fly out in the third is his two at bat so far. 1-1 one -one pitch here, a little bit too far outside on that heater, two balls and one strike. Folsom doing his homework out there at second base, checking where the outfielders are. That way he knows whether or not a ball will be in the gap. This one is in the gap, and it's going to bring Folsom home. Should be a double for Hotailing, but it kicks around in the outfield, and Marais will throw it in. Two balls and one strike ends up being an RBI double for Hotailing as he strikes for the first time in game three. Probably going to be a short leash here for Phillip as there is action in the Mountain Lion bullpen. RBI number 31 on the season for Adam Hotailing, who trades places with Luke Folsom. Six to four in favor of the Ore Diggers, our score now. Three in the second, two in the third, one here in the fifth for Colorado School of Mines. Mount Lions had two in the first and two in the third to get their four runs on the day. At the plate now, the lefty Taylor White. 
First pitch to him, swung on and missed. Nice low and away heater there for strike one. It's Phillip pitching with some emotion on the mound as he looks unhappy up there. 0 and 1. The pitch here. There's that changeup and gets White off his timing. 0 and 2. Yeah, intense pitchers like this hate giving up runs. Coming from experience, I know that, and this is definitely an angry Cole Phillip on the mound right now. And just the way he's holding his body, you can tell. 0-2 here, nobody out, runner on second, hotailing. Swung on and missed. Great outside heater there. Went back to the two-seamer, and it ran away from Taylor White. And a great strike out there to get the first out of the inning. And I wouldn't even call it bad body language. It's just he's turned it up to another level right now. Fourth strikeout of the day for Cole Phillip. First since he retired. All three with strikeouts in the first inning. First pitch misses inside to Ely Shu, who comes up one for one with a single and a fly out. He was stranded on third base after he singled in the third. 1-0 pitch, that one's at the knees for strike one. one one pitch, similar spot to the last one but a little bit lower, two balls in one strike. Tailing has a decent lead at second, but nothing too bad. This one's left over the plate and hit well into left center field. And that one's off the wall. Into score is Hotailing. And once again, trading places as Ely Shu goes into second base. The second RBI double, third double overall in the inning. This may do it for Cole Phillip, and it will as Hadjik comes on out. Three doubles in the inning for the Ore Diggers. Chases Cole Phillip in the fifth inning for UCCS. He goes four and a third, but that's gonna end it for him. I imagine Hadrick's just waiting out there to get a few more warm-up pitches for his pitcher in the pen. And when the umpire makes it up to the mound, I think he'll take the baseball. They'll talk to the umpire as well. And there's the point to the bullpen and that's the end of the day for Cole Phillips. So we'll take a step away here. When we come back, it'll be Toby, Toby Skull, excuse me, at the plate for the ore diggers. But it is a pitching change for UCCS in the top of the fifth.
Toby Scholes will be the first to face Hunter Owens for the Mountain Lions now on the mound. First pitch misses for ball one out of the hands of Hunter. Also entering the game for the Mount Lions, Matt Johnson behind the plate replaces Tyler Richardson. One and no, fouled off out of play. One ball and one strike. As it stands right now, seven runs, six earned for Cole Phillip on his day, but out there on second base, Ely Shu is his responsibility. There's a curveball and breaks a little bit too hard on Owens out of the zone. Two balls and one strike. Good movement on that breaking ball, though, for Hunter Owens. This one's hit into left center field. That'll get down and another double in the inning coming from the ore diggers and trading places again. Ely Shu in to score. And out there now on second base, Toby Scholes. Ordigger's starting to run away with it a little bit here in the fifth inning. Eight to four, they double up the Mountain Lions. Four doubles in the inning, three runs scored. RBI number 31 for Hotailing earlier in the inning. RBI number 32 for Ely Shu. And that last double was RBI number 22 for Toby Scholes. Ball one delivered to Caden Bonds, though. In this at bat, the 1 0 pitch is low, two balls and no strikes. That one leaks through Johnson for a moment, but stays with him at the plate, so Scholes stay put, stays put, I should say, at second base. Owens comes set. 2 0. There's another breaking ball, and Underneath it, a bit too much is Bonds. Two balls and one strike as he fouls that one out of play. This game is really going to be something where the mountain line offense is going to have to take it into their own hands and pick up the pitching staff because there's a lot of extra base hits this game. Nice breaking ball there. Two balls and two strikes. Two, two. Great spot there. Easily could have been strike three, but just misses the black. Three and two. Owens wanted the call, but doesn't get it. Three and two, the count. One out. Runner on second is Toby Scholes. Three runs already in for Colorado School of Mines. A 3 2 pitch. Curveball outside. Ball four and losing. Bonds to first base is Hunter Owens. First and second now. One out for Keen Tanaka. Yeah, I wanted that pitch that ran the count 3-2 called a strike as well. But definitely wrapped around the plate. Maybe just didn't catch the black, which is fine. Still a gr uh, one pitch away from getting a ground ball double play and ending the inning. Looked like a good spot to us. It was a good frame job as well by Matt Johnson behind the plate. That one gets away at the backstop. Both runners will move up, which is tough for the Mount Lions. It takes the double play out of order as Johnson didn't know where it went. One ball and no strikes on Tanaka. Second and third now on the base pass. be a wild pitch for Hunter Owens. Mm -hmm. 
Nice breaking ball there. Drops back into the zone, one and one. Kind of locked up Tanaka, you could tell by his body language. Did he go? No, he did not. One and two. As Shoes scores, that closes the book on Cole Phillip. His final line, four and a third, 10 hits, eight runs, seven earned. One walk, four punch outs, and 24 batters faced. One and two here though, bounced third base, foul ball. I was ready for another Nate Heffelbauer play there. Looking like Nolan Arenado at third base yesterday. Want to see some more of that today, to be honest. He took the words right out of my mouth. Looked like it was stacking up to look like that third inning play he made yesterday. Kind of picked it off the line on the backhand as he was moving away, threw across his body and retired the runner at first. An amazing play it was indeed. The bench player over there in the mines dugout fails to make the pick and his team makes fun of him in the dugout one and two though at the plate so Moick tries to extend the inning further for the ore diggers and bring a few more runs home there's two RBIs out there for him one two inside fastball high two and two Eight to four in the top of the fifth. This is a nine inning game for game three. The nightcap this evening will be a seven inning game. Two two though here. Ooh, way out in front of that one and lining it into the screen of his own dugout. Two balls and two strikes, the count stays. I don't think I've ever seen a full dugout completely dive backwards to get out of the way because that ball was hammered right towards them. Always got to be in the game, even in the dugout. 2-2 two, two again. There's that curveball. Ooh. Sarah was running in from shortstop, but it's a 3-2 count instead. A Mount Lion fan base letting the umpire hear it. Home plate umpire today, Jeffrey Maxey. Mark Moffitt over at first base. Rob Montoya at second. and letting that one go just a little bit outside. And the bases are full for Mason Andrews. Man, two off-speed pitches that just come back and look like they catch the edge of the plate, but call it balls and then they both lead two walks themselves. 
So a little bit frustrating for Hunter Owens, I can imagine. Still, it's in his, it's up to him still to make good pitches, do what he's been doing, and get Andrews out to end this inning and end, stop the bleeding for the Mountain Lions. The job now is just to get a ball on the ground if you're Hunter Owens. That one's a little too far inside for ball one on the opening breaking ball. If he does get that ground ball in the infield, the infield can simply step on the nearest base or throw across, but 0-1. Pitch here, this one's hit in the air. This should be an out to Dylan Morais, and he shades back and makes the catch in center field. But damage done further in the inning for the ore diggers. Three runs in the inning. Double up the Mountain Lions, eight to four, as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning from Mountain Lion Field, or excuse me, Mountain Lion Park. Stubbings to the plate first in the bottom half of the fifth inning with four, five, and six hitters due to the plate for UCCS. First pitch swinging for Stubbings, 0 and 1. Looks like we're gonna get a pinch hitter after Stubbings as Zach Damel is on deck in Farragala's spot. Damel, another one of those seniors we're honoring after the games today. 0-2 though at the plate on Caleb Stubbings and that one gets away. One ball and two strikes. I think this is a great opportunity to get all of the seniors in today's game to let them have their maybe possible final moments at least playing here at Mountain Line Park. One ball and two strikes, fouling that one off and holding it behind the plate. So a foul tip strikeout is out number one as Schoenman gets stubbings. And it is Damel that will pinch hit. Comes in with a 238 average. And Get this going. Ball's hit a well. Let's go. And see you later. Zach Tamil in a pinch hitting situation on the first pitch he sees. Knocks one over the wall and straight away center field. Happy senior day. What a job there. Hitting his first big fly of the season, just his second RBI and wasting no time and making an impact in the pinch hitting spot, Zach Dammel knocks one out. Why not? Why not? Get your first home run in the last home, home series of the, of the year. The Mount Lions trying to claw their way back into this one, get some help from the bench. One ball and no strikes on the DH. Casey Campbell fouling that one back, one and one. I swear, one of the highlights 
of all of these games is seeing that redshirt run across the field to get foul balls behind home plate, and he's just sprinting every single time, and I love it. Always got to get that hard 90 in. Swinging through that fastball, though, is Casey Campbell. He may be the most in shape mountain lion by this time at the end of the season. Certainly has the most endurance, no question about that. This one's hit well to right field, but it looks like it's going to be right at Andrews out there. He takes a few steps to his right and makes the catch for out number two. Boy, he just missed that, just out in front on that pitch and off at the end of the bat. Otherwise, that ball would have been mashed over the wall. A little bit of cloud cover coming over Mountain Lion Park here in the base of Pulpit Rock. 0-1 on Matt Johnson, who replaced Tyler Richardson. Richardson finishes his day offensively in game three one for one with an rbi double and this is a base hit into center field two out knock for matt johnson extends the inning to nate heffelbauer heffelbauer one for one with a single and a ground out he'll try and move it forward to dylan Morace, who's on deck Fouling the first pitch away, Heffelbauer behind 0-1. Close play on the pickoff, but diving back in safely is Johnson. 0-1 still at the plate on Heffelbauer, another pickoff. Showman thought he had it. He was breaking towards the dugout. 0-1 though. Goes to the plate and hits Heffelbauer. So first and second now with two outs as the hit by pitch moves Johnson up to second and puts Heffelbauer on first. Dylan Morace, who in his first at bat was hit on the very first pitch he saw after coming in for Walker Rumsey, who was one for one with a single. And when you pay that much attention to a base runner, you can kind of forget. You got to face a hitter as well. And maybe a situation like that as he misses that fastball and hits Heffelbauer. So a pair of Mountain Lion seniors out there on the base pass for Dylan Morace. Morace hopes he sees more than one pitch in this at bat after he was struck by the first one he saw. The junior for the Mountain Lions takes ball one away. So you will see a second pitch this at bat, luckily for Morais. Showman comes set, 1-0. Fouled away out of play, one and one. Showman set, 1-1. One, one. Outside, 2-1. Two and one. And to your point, after he checked so often on, uh, excuse me, Johnson at first hasn't even looked at the runners in this at bat. Two balls and one strike at the plate on Morace. This one's left over, but missing that pitch to hit is Morace fouling it straight back off of the screen. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah, that's probably what his pitching coach came out to say. Is like, dude, you're trying to pick off a catcher. He's not going to try and steal. Focus on the hitter instead of uh, the base runner. Especially with the catcher in front. 2-2 two -two pitch on the outside part of the plate. Mines dugout wants a call, but it's that same spot that we were talking about on those curveballs earlier from Owens that look like strikes but called balls. So 3-2 and two 
and a consistent home plate umpire is all you ever want. Three and two, two out, swung on and missed. Showman with a massive strikeout. Keeps the Mount Lions only with one run in the inning after the Zach Damol home run with one out. Mount Lions do get the one run back, but still trail eight to five. And the Ore Diggers will be back up to the plate in the sixth inning when we return. Top of the lineup here, or excuse me, not top of the lineup, 25, not 35. Three hole in Luke Folsom leading things off. There's that breaking ball from Owens again back out there for UCCS. Misses outside ball one. And he's done damage in this game, a home run and a double. The double on an 0-2 pitch. This one's hit high in the air. Could still be in play and just on the wrong side of the netting. It hits on that concrete slab there, which is impressive that it came back and hit that little thin spot on the other side of the netting there. And almost hits one of our cameras too. One of the cameras and a whole bunch of fans right there, but nobody gets it. One and one at the plate the UCCS soft, the soccer team is here and they all scattered when that foul ball went that direction. Tough play here for Owens. He's gonna hold the throw. So an infield swinging bunt single and a leadoff base runner on for the Or Diggers. Now, I just realized Folsom has three legs of the cycle now. He does indeed a triple, or he is a triple away. A single, a double, and a home run. 0-1 at the plate on Ho Tailing, who had an RBI double his last time up. First time breaking through here today after hitting an all but one of his at-bats last, or yesterday, I should say. That's a curveball called for a strike on the outside half, 0-2. Oh, Hotailing, kind of asking the umpire where that one was. He definitely didn't like that call. Did seem a little generous on that outside half. 0-2 oh, though here, this one was down over the plate. That's a fair ball. And streaking into the corner is Damel. Coming around and into score is Folsom from first. And there's the triple for Hotailing. He's got the two legs of the cycle himself with a double and a triple. Second RBI in the game for Hotailing, 32nd of his season. So 
So the Mount Lions get a run back in the top half of the in or in the bottom half of the previous inning, I should say, and the Ore Diggers take it right back here. High and inside, bailing out of the box there is Taylor White. One ball and no strikes for the right field, or excuse me, the left fielder of the Ore Diggers. 1-0, this one's hit a ton to right field and the Mount Lions are gonna watch it sail over the fence. A two run shot for Taylor White, his fourth home run of the season. RBIs 20 and 21 for him. And that puts the Ore Diggers up four. Excuse me, up six. 11 to five now our score. Too many crooked numbers for the Mountain Lion pitching staff given up. A three, three run second inning, a two run third, and now a two three run innings in the fifth and sixth innings. It's just not what you can do as a pitching staff. You gotta keep those numbers straight. That one's bounced foul for Shu for the first offering of his at bat. 0-1. Third three run inning of the game for the Ore Diggers. Haven't scored more than three though in a frame to this point. 0-1 pitch, fastball, Ow. fouled off of Matt Johnson. He's gonna take a little walk. Home plate umpire is gonna go hand the ball to Owens himself. Mount Lions are gonna refill the umpire's pouch as well, give their catcher that much more time to collect himself. Umpire will check on Matt Johnson. He'll even ask him, do you want me to clean off the plate as well? Give you that extra second, but Johnson says, no, I'm good to go. 0-2 oh on shoe. No one on, three runs in, nobody out still. And this one's a base hit up the middle. Nope, Coley. Oh, almost a great play. He kept it in the infield, did McCauley Sayre, but not quite in time to get the speedster shoe at first. And another infield single in the inning for the Ore Diggers. Number 27, Kobe Scholes. Speaking of the cycle, Scholes is a triple away himself. Solo shot in the second, a single in the third but was erased on a double play and an RBI double last inning. He was stranded on third. First pitch fouled away for strike one on Skulls. There's a couple of ore diggers will have the shot at the coveted cycle here today. Runner goes, 0-1, oh, Johnson throws, but won't get shoe. Stolen base, ball at the plate, one and one. And another ore digger makes it to scoring position. And a great jump from shoe with the left-handed pitcher. You just have to go on first movement from the left-handed pitcher and trust that he's committed to the plate. And he did commit to the plate and got in the second very easily. This one's on the ground, no triple this time. Owens will have to cover. Nice job by Hunter Owens coming off of the mound, securing the throw and touching first base. Moving up to third though is Ely Shu. One out, runner on third for Caden Bonds. A single, a walk, and a double play ground out. And this may do it for Owens as Hadrick comes out. We'll see. And they do take the baseball for Hunter Owens. He ends his day on a nice coverage play at first base, but a tough day on the Pitching rubber for him will step away once again. Second pitching change in consecutive innings for the Mount Lions as they swap pitchers in the top of the sixth.
J.J. Ritz will come in for UCCS on the mound. He'll face Caden Bonds for the first time. First pitch in there for strike one and a good start for Ritz. Ritz comes in with a 13.19 ERA. That one's hit high in the air, shallow center field. It's gonna be Sam Morano and a quick throw in. Nice pick at the pitcher's mound by Caleb Stubbings to cut it off. Two outs though and a good start as Ritz is able to get Bonds. Brings up Tanaka. Yeah, good play from Sam Morano, but that's got to be a center fielder's ball all day long. With it being that far in the air, he's going to have the best view of it. Much more comfortable having a center fielder catch that. High on that one. Ball one as Tanaka takes his fourth turn of the day. For Ritz, this will be his ninth appearance of the season. All in relief, he's... 1-0 in decisions, great pitch there on the outside half. Looked like a changeup, 1-1. One one. Come set, 1-1 one, one pitch, another fastball, swung on and missed. Tanaka working ahead is Ritz, one ball and two strikes as he overpowers the ore diggers catcher on that heater. One and two, two outs, runner on third for CSM. That one's on the ground. Heffelbauer up with it. Collect himself, throw across, nice and easy. Number eight at third base. And that's the third out of the inning. Tanaka moves to one and four. And the ore diggers strike for another big inning. They get three runs and lead this one by six, 11 to five, as we go to the bottom of six from Mount Lion Park. Nash Neff, who is 1-0 on the season, makes his 10th appearance of the season all in relief for him as a 2.63 earned run average, and it's going to be a tough test for the Mount Lions. Swung on, foul tip held, strike one as Danko pinch hits here for McCauley Sarah in the top of the lineup. Some velocity from Neff there. Second pitch on the ground, that one into the glove of Folsom. He'll go across and get Danko for out number one. Now number five, Luis Samarano. Samarano. 
It's two for three with a single and a triple. Fouls that one out of play, strike one. Oh, one hit in the air, shallow center field. This again is gonna be a second base play, but nope. There's the center fielder Moek coming in at the last moment and making the catch. Kind of questionable communication out there between the middle infielders and the center fielder for the ore diggers. Well, I think anywhere else, that's a fly out or pop out to one of those infielders, but because of the wind, it's blowing it further out, and then the center fielder is able to come in late and make the play. First pitch here to Wigington in there called strike one. Oh, yeah. and two now. A good fastball and a good curveball from Neff. 0-2 pitch, fastball, swung on, fouled away, unable to secure it is Tanaka. 0-2, the count stays. Final line on Shonman. He goes five innings, ten hits, five runs, only three earned. No walks, six punch outs, 27 batters face. He threw 87 pitches. 0-2 oh, with two outs, way high. A breaking ball that never went anywhere, one and two. Wigington two for three with a double and a two run shot. And strike three called on the corner. Wigington with his second strikeout of the day goes down looking at a one, two, three inning for Nash Neff. He continues to be effective for the ore diggers and the Mount Lions come up empty in the bottom of the six. We go to the seventh. Mount Lions down six with the ore diggers up 11 to five. Top of the lineup here for the ore diggers with Moek coming to the plate as a first batter in the seventh. Rich still out there on the mound for UCCS. First pitch heater in there for strike one. Two for four, a strikeout, a flyout, or the two out, or excuse me, two for three, a walk, a single, a strikeout, and a flyout in his four at bats at the plate. 0 oh 2 though here. As working quickly ahead is Ritz. O2, high ball one. One, two, outside in the dirt, two and two. So there's those two outside chase pitches you were talking about earlier. And the count is even on Moek.
This one's lined down the third base side, falls just foul. Count stays even at two. Final line on Hunter Owens. He goes just one inning, five hits, three runs all earned, two walks and a single strikeout, 10 batters faced for him. He threw 40 pitches in his time on the bump. For Ritz here though, count runs full. This is just his third batter faced after retiring the first two he saw in Bonds and Tanaka to end the fit or the six, excuse me, for the Mount Lions. This one's high in the air, should stay in the infield. And Heffelbauer who slid over to shortstop makes the catch, tosses it over to Andrew Danko who took his spot at third. One out in the inning for Ritz. Brings up Mason Andrews, he is 0 for 3. Only time he reached was back in the first on a hit by pitch. That one misses outside, ball one. Outside, ball two, just missed on that one, did Ritz. And he's been living around the zone. And one thing I've noticed as well is a lot of the balls hit are not very, are not hit very hard, which is a good sign. Lots of soft contact indeed, even on the foul balls as that one's hit off the end of the bat out of play, two and one. Two and one, one out here, no one on. Fouled that one into the screen in front of the Mount Lions dugout, skips into the infield. Samarano will retrieve and throw it back to the mouth of his dugout. Two and two, nice job by Ritz to work this count back even. Two, two, outside count full once again. Back-to-back -back batters here, count is full. See where Ritz goes with his pitch mix here. 3-2 pitch, fastball, hit, yes, driving great catch play. again. Stubbings flashing the leather once more. And a hard line drive should have been in the possibly an extra base hit, getting all the way down to their wall, but Stubbings laying out once again and making a fantastic catch. First out in the fourth inning was a diving line out into the glove of Caleb Stubbings. He picked that one just off of the turf. This one, a little more obvious, but still a great play. Strike one delivered now at the plate on Luke Folsom, who takes his fifth at bat he's a triple away from the cycle a strikeout looking his first time a solo shot a double and an infield single so the triple all he needs for the coveted cycle oh and two though with two outs on him here oh and two Outside, one and two. That's a good miss, One looking for a swing there on the curveball. I like that off-speed pitch in an, in, in an 0-2 count. One and two, two outs, nobody on as Rich tries to stay perfect in the inning. That one misses outside again, count evens, two balls and two strikes, again looking for a chase. And another good pitch and Folsom thought about swinging, he did. His body checks just a little bit. Two's across the board, two and two. This one's hit into right field, going back and over the glove out there. It'll be a two out double. 
And a base runner here in scoring position now as Taylor, or excuse me, as Hotaling comes to the plate. And a good piece of hitting, got a fastball on the outside part of the plate, and he smacks it down the right field line for extra bases. Damel out there who replaced Aaron Farragala, unable to catch up with it, got just over his glove. So a two, run, two out, I should say, base runner for, UC, or for Colorado School of Mines as I've got all confused here. Outside fastball though is strike one. That's Folsom's 27th double on the year. Swung on, 0-2. Oh Oh and two outside, one and two. This one's on the ground, diving gets past Danko. They're gonna send the runner, relay, late. Another run comes through, 12 to five now in favor of the Ore Diggers and an RBI single for Hotaling. Now batting number 14, Taylor White. Third RBI of the game, RBIs in the last three innings for Hotaling. And he's now a home run away from the cycle, dressed in his last three at bats, an RBI double, an RBI triple, and an RBI single in his last three in the fifth, sixth, and seventh innings as White takes for strike one. So lots of potential cycles for the ore diggers. Curveball swung on and missed, nice breaking ball there, and for the third straight batter, Ahead 0-2 is Ritz. And quite the offensive clinic put on by the Ore Dickers all weekend in all three games so far. 0-2 pitch, that one's outside, takes the glove off of Johnson. Oh, or excuse me, ball one, one and two. That's where you worry about a thumb for a catcher on pitches like that. Looks like he's fine. This one's hit high in the air, off the base of the wall past Wigington, up with it in center field, and throwing it in is Morais. And first and third now for the Ore Digger, or excuse me, second and third for the Ore Diggers as a, another two out extra base hit puts Taylor White on second. Ely Shu to the plate. He's three for four. Couple of singles and a double, also an RBI for him. Outside, ball one. Two balls and no strikes. Two zero -oh. fastball down the middle, bounced over to Heffelbauer. He'll skip it over to first, and just in time to get Ely Shu. And that's the third out of the inning. But the Ore Diggers get another run. They're up seven to five as we get to stretch time here.
Hitter Caleb Stubbings leading things off for UCCS in the seven. Stubbings is one for three with a run scored. He's got a single, reached on an error back in the third and struck out swinging his last time up, though he takes for ball one here. Second pitch, left over the plate, hit well to left center field. And that one goes the distance for Caleb Stubbings, his 16th big fly of the year, 59th RBI. And the Mountain Lions get a run back, though they still need all the runs that they've gotten so far to go 12 to six in favor of the Ore Diggers. And just a moonshot of a home run going over the scoreboard and giving the Mountain Lions a little bit of life. Still, tra still trying to catch six runs. And this one left over the plate, but getting underneath it is Dammel. High fly ball and underneath it in center field. Moek makes the catch for out number one. Moves Dammel to one and two on his day. Farragala started the day in the five hole, only had two at bats, a fly out to center his first time, a swinging strikeout his second time. Outside strike on Campbell, opens his at bat, 0-1. Dammel, after he came in to pinch hit last time up in the fifth inning took the first pitch he saw and put it over the center field fence 0-2 though here good morning good afternoon good night and Campbell takes a seat and a good bounce back from the pitcher really good stuff seen from him from Neff gave up the home run bounced back got a fly out and now a strikeout two outs in the inning Two outs, and the home run off the bat of Stubbings is the only Mount Lion that has reached on Nash Neff since he's entered the game. Ball one, though, delivered here to Matt Johnson, who replaced Richardson. Swung on, missed on that one. Curve ball low and away gets Johnson to bite. One ball, one strike. One one pitch here, fastball outside half, strike two, one and two. Johnson is one for one so far at a single in his first at bat, but goes down swinging here. A leadoff solo shot off the bat of Caleb Stubbings gets the Mount Lions a run back, but a fly out and two swinging strikeouts since. Gets the Or Diggers out of the inning with minimal damage. Mount Lions down six as the Or Diggers continue to roll offensively. We'll see how they respond into the top half of the eighth.
Brian Marquez comes on for the Mount Lions to start the eighth inning. Toby Scholes leading things off, seven, eight, and nine due up for Colorado School of Mines, fouling that first pitch off for strike one is Scholes, 0-1. Oh Final line on Ritz, he goes an inning and two-thirds. That one misses one and one now. Inning and two-thirds for Ritz, three hits, one run, which was earned, no walks, no strikeouts, and eight batters faced. He threw 38 tosses, 1-1. One, one. That one's just a little bit inside on the breaking ball, two balls and one strike. For Marquez, he comes in with a 15.26 earned run average. 0-3 on his season, this is his 12th appearance. His ninth relief appearance as three of his appearances on the season were starts. Three and one though here on Skulls to start his day, working out of the windup. Three one, this one's on the ground. Good pick up there and Stubbings will keep it himself. Touch his bag for out number one. And all of those pitches from Brian were pretty solid. The ones in the dirt were supposed to be low in the zone, so if you were going to miss, you better miss low. So good first batter from Marquez so far. First pitch here in there on the outside half, strike one on Bonds. This one's fouled off. It's going to get out of play on the first base side. Almost hit the women's soccer team over there. They get out of the way, 0-2. As we mentioned, UCCS women's soccer getting their RMAC tournament rings between games here today. Have to think that Seeing that ceremony for both of these teams on the baseball field will give them that extra motivation heading into the RMAC tournament next weekend. One and two pitch here from Marquez, fouled off. Again, this one's gonna get into the parking lot. One and two, the count will stay. One, two. Curveball hit up the middle for a base hit. A one out base runner for the ore diggers is Caden Bonds who stands on first and that brings up Tanaka. And a good pitch, a good piece of hitting from Bonds, just putting it in play back up the middle, got a base hit out of it. Moves Bonds to two for four on his day and five at bats. He's got two singles, a walk, a ground out into a double play and a fly out. First pitch to Tanaka misses for ball one. Tanaka on his day has an RBI double. That was in his first at bat in the second. Hasn't reached since a line out. That's that diving pick off the turf play in the fourth from Stubbings. Runner goes, hit and run on, and that hurts for the Mountain Lions. It would have been an easy play for Samarano, but he went to the bag to cover, and it goes through. So first and third now, the top of the lineup with Moick. And that's exactly a, a perfectly executed hit and run. Runner moving, Sam Morano from second breaking, and that's where you want to hit it is whichever middle infielder breaks, that's where you want to hit it. And, of course, he hits it right past Sam Morano. He had no chance to stop and try and make that play. Coming to the plate now, Moick for his sixth at bat. He's one for five, or excuse me, one for four with a walk, a single, couple flyouts, and a strikeout. First pitch to him misses ball one. Oh, one is a high changeup, two balls and no strikes. pitch right down the pipe fastball strike one 
Doesn't get any better than that pitch. Two one pitch, another good pitch down the middle. That one off speed, two and two. Runners on the corners here. Bonds on third to knock on first. One out, two and two at the plate. The batter, Moek. No runs in in the inning yet. This one oh. hit well into left field. Wigington's going to watch this one sail out. A three run shot for Wayne Moek. His fourth home run, or excuse me, 14th home run of the season. And the Ore Diggers take a 15 to 6 9 run lead. And now that being their 21st hit on the day, 10 is usually a good number to get in a full ball game. And now just in the top of the eighth, they're running with 21. 15 runs on 21 hits and one defensive error for the Ore Diggers. Six runs on 11 hits, two defensive errors for the Mountain Lions. First pitch here to Mason Andrews misses outside for ball one. And another note, 12 of those 21 hits are of extra bases, which is, and it's, it is, is a crazy number. Another three run inning put up for the ore diggers, this time in one swing of the bat from Moick. RBIs number 34, 35, or excuse me, 54, 55, and 56 for Wayne. 3 0 pitch, that one's in the dirt, and a four pitch walk to Andrews. Marquez, one of the seniors honored today for UCCS. Brings up Luke Folsom. Couple of doubles, an infield single and a home run. Still looking for that triple for the cycle is Folsom. The way the Ore Diggers are batting. He may have another opportunity even after this at bat. We'll see. First pitch fastball outside half, strike one. Yeah, this is already their sixth time around as a team, which is a lot for a nine inning game. And the scoreboard shows 15 to six. And it, they're hitting clinic from them. This one's in the air, could get into the gap. And it's over the fence. Back to, or not back to back, but two home runs in the inning, a three run shot from Moick and a two run shot from Folsom. His second long ball of the game, his 15th home run of the season. And he gets himself RBIs 54 and 55. This is straight up massacre. Yes. Yeah! Now Andrews comes around to score on the home run from Folsom. Five runs in the inning. Action in the bullpen for the Mountain Lions. Swung on and missed going down to a knee, but coming up empty is hoteling. That one inside, two balls and one strike. After the leadoff ground out to Stubbings at first, the next five batters come around to score for the Ore Diggers. Hotailing is the seventh batter of the inning for Colorado School of Mines. His count is even at two. Marquez fires. That one in the dirt, three and two. Seventeen to six, our score as the Ore Diggers have had an explosion of offense in this one. Three and two pitch fouled away, count stays. Four 
for Golden's baseball boys. Three in the second, two in the third, none in the fourth, three in the fifth, three in the sixth, one in the seventh, five here in the eighth. Make it six. Ho tailing. Back to back jacks for the ore diggers. And it's 18 to six. And that's going to give him the cycle. Indeed. Hitting a double, a triple, a single, and a home run. Not only is that a cycle for him, but it's a cycle in the last four innings. Since the fifth inning for Hotailing, an RBI double, an RBI triple, an RBI single, and a solo shot here for the cycle. Almost a natural cycle, too. Just an incredible achievement for who tailing in a game that has kind of turned into a stat padding game and Alex Bumpus is, is going to pinch hit here we saw him in the game yesterday start in game two in left field one ball no strikes low fastball one and one 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 inside two balls and one strike. Two one pitch left over the plate, but bounced in an error over there off the glove of Danko, took his eyes off of it. And Bumpus is going to think about going to second, but stop. And an error with one out allows Bumpus to reach. And that's a, a really tough error to take in this situation. Brian Marquez needed the ground out there and he just isn't unable to get in. Looks like we'll have a pitching change here. And indeed, Hadrick comes out. He's gonna take the baseball from Marquez. And a tough outing from him, not exactly his fault on senior day, but that'll do it for him. As we'll step away once again, another pitching change for the Mount Lions as their fifth pitcher of the day comes in in the top of the eighth. For the ore diggers, it's going to be a pinch hitter here. Jacob 
Bakovic in the game. Takes for ball one inside. New pitcher for the Mountain Lions, Braden Barker. And that's a hit by pitch. So another base runner and the ore diggers bat around in the eighth inning. That was Bakovic's first at bat on the year, and looks like he's only been a pitcher this year. Indeed, as the Ore Diggers can have some fun here, up 12 runs. Swing on, swing on that first pitch. Comes up empty, does Toby Scholes. 0-1. I actually had an at bat in college myself. We had a game like this at my junior college. We were up 20 runs. And coach was like, Newman put a helmet on. And uh, I went up there and I struck out, but I kept my head held high. In high school, I had a similar game, but I was a position player, so I just switched batter's box. Nice. Hit lefty. I believe I walked that at bat. I was too afraid to swing the bat. I thought I was going <laughs> to let go of it if I did. <laughs> One and two. I did have a wiffle ball left-handed base hit once. Love that. Doesn't matter for much, though. One and two here. Nice fastball there. Barker gets a strikeout. Just the second out in the inning and tough for Scholes. Two at-bats in the eighth, two outs. Brings up Caden Bonds. His second at bat of the inning, he singled, was a first base runner and another single for him here. They're gonna send the runner, throw comes from center field and a good one, but just a little bit late. Bumpus comes around to score. And it's a 19 to six game. Unearned as Bumpus reached on an error. Moving up to second base is Jackson Bakovich. Check swing from Tanaka, fouled away, strike one. Inside, one and one. Seven run inning so far in the eighth for the Ore Diggers. And this one's bounced. This should get the mountain lines out of it. Nice play over there by Heffelbauer to go across his body and that ends the inning as Tanaka grounds out. But damage done in a big way by the Ore Diggers. Seven runs, and they have a 19 to six lead as we go to the bottom of eight.
Nate Heffelbauer leading things off in the eighth for UCCS with lots of work to do. 11 run deficit takes for strike one. Kind of get the feeling that Neff is gonna go the rest of this game. And uh, he would come back with a save even in this, uh, how lopsided the score is. If you pitch the last three innings of a baseball game, you get a save. Three inning save indeed. One one here, high ball two and Neff definitely has the ability to do that. Two and one inside, three and one. Just missed the elbow of Heffelbauer on that one as he leaned back. Heffelbauer one for two with a single, a ground out, and a hit by pitch. Runs a count full on this one, fouling that one out of play. Three balls and two strikes. Tough day for the Mount Lions. Looked promising in the early innings, but fell apart in the middle innings. And just the wheels have fallen off here in the late innings as coming across, nice play by Folsom to come grab that one and throws Heffelbauer out at first base for out number one. And I mean, it's a blessing as well. They get to play again right after this, so you've got to erase this game completely in the 30-minute break and focus on game two to hopefully maybe get into that fifth spot in the standings. For UCCS, it also gives them the opportunity to give their seniors time on the field here on senior day as Dylan Morais 0-1 on him, that one's low in the dirt, one ball and one strike. One one, curveball drops in there. One ball and two strikes now on Dylan Morais. Alex Bumpus who pinch hit in the Top half of the inning stays in defensively in left field. Foul tip held on Morais, a strikeout in his second of the game. It is the second out of the inning for UCCS. That brings up the top of the lineup in Andrew Danko. First pitch misses for ball one on Danko. That one's in there for a called strike. Also entering defensively after pinch hitting Jackson Bakovich over at second base. Caden Bond slides over to shortstop. one this one's hit well high in the air could stay and play in foul territory and right at the edge of his dugout reaching up and making the catch Folsom the Mountain Lions go down one two three in their half of the eighth we go to the final frame ninth inning after this war diggers up big 19 to 6 
top of the ninth inning and the top of the ore diggers lineup scheduled to hit wayne moek up first and mason andrews waits on deck first pitch in there a nice breaking ball drops in for strike one Braden barker back out there for uccs That one low, one ball and one strike. One one pitch outside in the dirt, two balls and one strike. And this may be a good opportunity for Barker to carry some momentum into next season being that he is a sophomore. Good chance to finish this outing strong and move into the next season uh, showing his coach that he can pitch pretty, oh. That one hits Moek, so he'll go to first. Lead off base runner for the ore diggers once again. Brings up Mason Andrews for the second at bat of the ore diggers half of the ninth for Barker. Coming in, 24.30 earned run average, has yet to get a decision. This is his seventh appearance all in relief on his season. First pitch fastball fouled off out of play for strike one. Final line on Brian Marquez, only goes a single third of an inning. Five hits, seven runs, only six earned. One walk, no strikeouts. And eight batters faced. He only threw 34 pitches for UCCS today. That one's bounced foul. 0-2. The Mountain Lions just want outs at this point. This one likely out of reach. A 13-run lead for the Ore Diggers, 19-6. Pitch here. Swung on and missed. Pitch in the dirt. Picked up and tagged out is Andrews, but a strikeout in the second of the game for Barker brings up Folsom. Yeah, good change up there and just gets him out in front and swings it, swings and misses at it, I should say, excuse me. A good pitch from Barker. Folsom now at the plate. That one catches him. So two hit by pitches. Put both runners on here in the ninth. Moving up to second is Moek. He was hit on a 2-1 pitch in his at-bat. First pitch to Folsom strikes him to put him on first. And Hotailing, who hit for the cycle, is going to be pinch hit for. Congratulations to Hotailing. What a huge accomplishment. That is hitting for the cycle. It is Brady Veltine that will hit in Hotelings place. First pitch swinging comes up empty for strike one. Yeah, cycles are very rare. In Major League Baseball, you maybe get one per season. So it's a very rare accomplishment and a very uh, difficult one to do as well, especially in the way that Hotelings did it getting it all within the four at-bat span. Usually you only get the four at-bats for Hotailing. He went 0 for 2 first and then got the cycle. One and one as that pitch missed at the plate on Veltine. 1-1 one, one pitch here and that one's in there on the outside half, one and two. almost accomplished the natural cycle, which is when you get a single, a double, a triple, and then a home run all in order. And that's even more difficult to do. And he almost did it. Strikeout of Veltine. So two strikeouts in the inning, the third of the game for Barker. All of the swinging variety. And that brings up Bumpus for his second at bat of the game after replacing Taylor White. He reached on an error in the eighth, also came around to score. It's part of that big seven run inning, the last frame for the War Diggers. First pitch in there for strike one. Next 
Next pitch, low and away, ball one. Evens the count at one on Bumpus. One one pitch. Ooh, dirty changeup right down the pipe. One and two as Bumpus fanned on that one. Quite a speed difference in that changeup for Barker. One and two here, two outs, two men on. Goes changeup again and out in front of it, but making contact is Bumpus and bounces it foul down the third base line. Nice hard sprint out there by a red shirt of the ore digger squad goes and retrieves that one. Barker looks in for a sign now that he gets the go ahead from the umpire. Steps off, waves at Moak out there on second base. One, two, strike three called on the outside half and striking out the side in the ninth is Braden Barker. He throws up the first zero for the Mountain Lions on the scoreboard since the fourth inning. And the score stays 19 to six as we go to the bottom half of the ninth from Mount Lion Park. Bottom of the ninth for the Mount Lions. The task is simple, 13 runs to tie, 14 to win. We'll see if they can do it. One ball, no strikes as the first pitch to Samarano misses. 1-0 on the ground, eats up Folsom. Can Samarano beat the throw? Not quite. Nice recovery at third by Luke Folsom to get out number one, a 5-3 put out. The Mount Lions down to their final two outs. In place of Kit Wigington, Brad Madison's gonna take a pinch hitting opportunity. First pitch to Madison, misses ball one. And we both know Madison has a ton of power himself. We see earlier in the year he had a few home runs and pinched it a couple of uh, games this weekend so far. We talked about the future of this Mount Lions squad, the redshirt freshman for UCCS, definitely going to be a part of it. 1-2 now as that breaking ball drops in. Inside, two and two. Madison batting 363 on his season has appeared in 31 games prior to today for UCCS. 
And in this instance, he runs the count full on Neff. Three balls and two strikes. Count down on the board. Three balls, two strikes, one out. 3-2 pitch, fastball. Way out in front of that one was Madison and got a little antsy on the 3-2 count and he goes down on strikes. Fifth strikeout of the day for Neff. Brings up Stubbings. First pitch to him, misses for ball one. One of the few starters left out there is Stubbings for UCCS. This one's hit well into right field. Going to the wall, it's off the base of the wall, cutting first and holding up is a strong throw made out there for Mason Andrews, so a long single with two outs in the ninth for Caleb Stubbings, pads his stats. Second single of the game. Overall, Stubbings moves to three for five. He's got a single, uh, two singles, excuse me, a home run, a strikeout, and then reached on an error back in the third, also came around to score. But now it's Zach Damel on senior day, swings through that first pitch for strike one. Big swing in that one. Had the home run just to the left of the batter's eye in his pinch hit appearance. Got his first home run of the year, which was pretty nice for grad day. When he comes in on senior day in pitch hitting situations and stays in and gets kind of free at bats from that point on, why not try and do damage every chance you have? One and one as that follow-up pitch was in the dirt. This one hit well, but straight up in the air. In short center field, it'll be Caden Bonds who makes the catch and ends the misery for the Mountain Lions. 19 to six, the final score. The Ore Diggers blow out the Mountain Lions in game three and once again, take sole possession of fifth place in the Armac from UCCS. UCCS drops to the sixth place position. UCCS moves to 20 and 29 overall. 15 and 16 in the RMAC Conference. For Colorado School of Mines, they move to 31 and 17, and they are 16 and 15 in the RMAC Conference. Don't go too far. We're gonna stay right here for the women's soccer team ceremony as they make their way towards the field. And Matt, just to close out the thoughts on this game, what do the Mount Lions have to do to reset mentally? You just gotta wipe this clean. Uh, you gotta move quickly past this game and focus on getting back into that shared fifth place position in conference. And it's gonna start with whoever started in game two today, uh, setting the tone early for the Mountain Lions, and then the offense as well to take a second and move past this one as well and get going early in game two since it's only gonna be a seven, seven inning game. Indeed, and for the ore diggers who jumped on the Mountain Lions quickly there in the middle innings, they kinda took their foot off a little bit and kinda started to have a little bit of fun. We saw the pitcher hit for the ore diggers and for Colorado School of Mines, they kind of have to continue with that momentum, though they could kind of relax and have a little bit of fun towards the end of the game with that huge lead that they have. They have to pick up right where they left off here in game four. Yeah, definitely. And another thing as well, minimizing those crooked number of innings, five of the nine innings that's, uh, sorry, excuse, five of the nine innings today the ore diggers had crooked numbers, and that's just not a recipe to winning ball games. And 
will highlight the women's soccer program here in just a moment as we get set with that. And we get the thumbs up to begin. So just some information on women's soccer here. The 2021 season was one of the best in the women's soccer program history. They won their third consecutive RMAC regular season championship and second ever RMAC tournament championship to make the program's fourth straight NCAA regional tournament appearance after they earned the number two seed in that regional tournament. Mount Lions claimed both the RMAC regular season and tournament championship in the same season for the first time ever in their program's history while also becoming the second athletics program in school history to achieve that double championship with the regular season crown and the tournament crown. So you see the team make their way onto the field. Head coach J.B. Belzer and the rest of the Mount Lions staff help lead the 2021 Mount Lions into the program record books by tying their most ever wins with a 19 and four overall record, making the program's second ever NCAA Sweet 16 appearance. Unfortunately, in that game, they fell to Dallas Baptist University, but the Mount Lions finished the 2021 season with a total of 17. Mount Lions finding the back of the net and helped rank UCCL's 13th highest scoring offense in NCAA Division II by averaging 2.7 goals per game, which in soccer is a whole bunch of offense. Three goals per game is a very comfortable lead. As a team, UCCS notched the ninth most assists with 51 and ninth most goals in Division II with 62, as well as the seventh most points in the nation with 175 as a team. Defensively, the Mount Lions held the opposition to a scoring average of just nine point, or excuse me, .96 goals per game as they registered 10 team shutouts for the second most in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. UCCS garnered a number eight ranking in the United Soccer Coaches final week 11 Division II national poll and was ranked as high as fifth in the nation during the season. And the Mount Lions ranked top 10 five different weeks throughout the season. They were in the top 25 all season long in the nation for women's soccer. The team's great deal of success came in an abundance of an awards as 17 of the Lady Mountain Lion athletes combined for a total of 45 awards, including three academic and scholar All-America awards, two All-America honors, five All-Region honors, six All-RMAC team selections, and 14 RMAC All-Academic awards. And congratulations to the Mount Lions women's soccer team on an unforgettable season as they continue to roll in that program and they look to do damage again next year in the RMAC and we are excited to see it coming in the fall from UCCS Mount Lions women's soccer. But for now, for us on the stream, my name is Jake Ross alongside Michael Newman. We're gonna say so long for now in about half an hour or so, It'll probably be a little bit closer to 45 minutes with the ceremony taking place in between. But we're gonna step away before game four for our camera crew, everyone in the truck, and all of us at Mountain Lion Athletics. Thank you for watching game three of this series between the Ore Diggers and the Mountain Lions. We'll be back in a little bit, but so long for now from Colorado Springs.